Okay, let's have a look at the ozone layer. So the ozone layer is very different to the greenhouse effect. The two have nothing to do with each other, and that's important to remember. So, the ozone layer is in part of the atmosphere called the stratosphere, which is 10 to 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So this does not take place at ground level. We're in the troposphere. This is taking place right up in the stratosphere. Okay, and its main job, the main job of the ozone layer is to filter out harmful UV rays. Rays. So the UV comes from our sun. Okay, this UV, this UV radiation, and it has different wavelengths. Okay, so the wavelengths are between 270 and 400 nanometers, and those different wavelengths are dealt with differently um, in the process. Okay, so between 200 and about 280 nanometers, all that's what we call UVC, and all that UV is completely screened out by the ozone layer. At the other end, UVA, that reaches the Earth surface. Okay, but that but that doesn't cause a lot of concern. It's not very damaging. The main problem is here, the UVB. Okay, this can cause sunburn. It can uh, cause genetic damage, and it can cause skin cancer. Okay, so this is a bit we really worry about. When you buy um, suntan lotion, and sometimes when you buy sunglasses, they'll talk about what type of UV it filters out. So I want to look out for is a UVB, because that's one you don't want uh, to be reaching your skin. Okay, so there's different wavelengths that's of UV. Right, so ozone, we talk about ozone, we're talking about O3, the molecule O3, three oxygens joined together. So how is it made? Well, first off, O2, oxygen gas, when that's hit by UV with a wavelength less than 240 nanometers, that high energy UV breaks up the O2 molecule to make two oxygen atoms. And those two oxygen, so those oxygen atoms then can go on and react with a different oxygen molecule to make O3. So that's how it's formed in the stratosphere. So that's why we don't have a lot of it around at this level, in the troposphere, you know, where we are, because we are not getting a, uh, we're not getting hit by UV with wavelengths that's that low, okay? And that's important, we're not, because that's very high energy, and that would be very damaging to us. So the O2 actually filters that out, and in the process, it's making oxygen atoms. So that's why we just get screened out here in this, this region, okay? The oxygen atoms in the stratosphere react to different oxygen molecules to make an ozone molecule. Ozone at this level is actually not very good for you. It's very bad for your breathing, um, it's, it's not very good for you at all. It's actually what we actually consider a pollutant. But up in the stratosphere, it's really important because it has its own role to play. So we produce the ozone that forms the ozone layer. So what does the ozone layer do? Well, this ozone reacts with the UV uh, with wavelengths less than 310 nanometers. So it's sort of between that 240 and that 310, what we called the UVB area. Okay. What it does, it's high energy again, it splits the ozone molecule up into an oxygen molecule and an oxygen atom. Okay? Now those two will react quickly again to reform the ozone. So what we have is the ozone is being formed like this at the same rate as it is broken. And it's in equilibrium. So O2, so oxygen gas with an oxygen atom, it's making an ozone molecule and that can go back again. So this equilibrium is naturally there and all it does is it filters out the, the UV so it doesn't reach us. Okay? And that's really important for life on Earth. Right. So what problems do we have then? So there's ozone deplete, depletion going on by carbon, uh, sorry, chlorofluorocarbons. CFCs. So here's an example here. This uh, chlorofluorocarbon. It goes through an initiation step, and that produces a chlorine-free radical. So the UV has split up this molecule to form a chlorine-free radical, and the rest of the molecules there. Okay. So that's an initiation step, just like you saw before 
with the um, halogenation of alkanes. So that chlorine free radical then can react with an ozone. And what it does, it pulls off an oxygen to form a, a new free radical here, a CLO, and an O2 molecule is formed. Propagation again always has two steps. So that free radical that's formed comes down here and reacts with an oxygen atom, which will be um, in the stratosphere from that equilibrium cell, and then that forms, reforms, I say, a chlorine free radical. So that's being regenerated, and another O2 molecule is formed. So overall, we've got ozone, O3, uh, reacting with an oxygen, oxygen atom to form two molecules of O2. So overall, we're breaking down ozone. And without ozone, we can't filter out that UVB area of, of the um, ultraviolet rays. So this is a man-made situation because CFC is a man-made. And that's changing our equilibrium. It's making it go um, in reverse. We're, we're reducing the amount of ozone we have. And that's a big problem. Okay. It's not just CFCs that do this, though. It can also occur... Um, by nitrogen oxides. Where do nitrogen oxides come from? One area is from aircraft, from the exhaust of aircraft. They can also come from when uh, lightning, uh, thunderstorms. So it's basically under extreme conditions, nitrogen and oxygen can react together to make nitrogen oxides. So here's an example NO. This nitrogen oxide is a free radical, it reacts with the ozone to make NO2 a mo and a molecule of O2, and then the NO2 react with the oxygen atom to make an NO, so it's regenerated again, and O2. So if you look at this, we've got the same overall equation. O3 plus O goes to 2O2. Same here. So the same process each time. The free radical reacts with O3, takes an oxygen off, and then that free radical is regenerated. And these free radicals are in the stratosphere. It's huge, huge um, sort of volume of air. So the chances of getting a termination step is really, really small. The chances of a chlorine free radical meeting another chlorine free radical are very small. It's not in a test tube, it's in the stratosphere. So a chlorine free radical can react with hundreds of thousands of ozones before it terminates. And that's the, huge, that's the real problem, is that it keeps regenerating and keeps on reacting. The same with this nitrogen oxide. Okay? So ozone depletion it's not limited to just chlorine free radicals and nitrogen oxides. Lots of free radicals, which we've just represented as R here, can react with ozone. It's the same pattern each time the free radical is regenerated. Okay? So R could be a chlorine free radical, or it could be any oxide of nitrogen. It's not just NO, it could be NO2, NO3, any of those who go on and react in the same way. And that leads to the depletion of ozone.